Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly Radio Show. Pumpkins, more than pies and jack-o'-lanterns, moments away, but first a word from our good bee friends at beehoney.com. Since 2000, honey be healthy. Honey be healthy. Doc. Yeah, I said that wrong, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. Um, since 2000, Honey Bee Healthy Inc. has helped keepers, beekeepers maintain healthy and thriving hives. Attracting pollinators to your garden this year is as simple as hanging a hummingbird feeder with a mixture of sugar water and Honey Bee Healthy Original. Don't be alarmed to see birds, bees, and butterflies dining together at the feeder. Pollinators coexist peacefully. Honey Bee Healthy Inc. is offering a 10% discount off of an 8-ounce bottle of Honey Bee Healthy Original to this show's listeners. Enter discount code BEEGARDEN at checkout for more information, mixing instructions, and to purchase products, visit honeybehealthy.com. So, pies and jack lanterns, more than more to pumpkins than that. Now, for here, here, and before we get into this, I think, and somebody can correct me at gardentalkradio at gmail.com, pumpkins, Holly, are the only produce in which are selectively available only at a specific time of year. Between September, late August, through Halloween, you can get pumpkins any store, anywhere. After that, you got to go can. There's no other, you can't go. I think you're right. You can't go to, you know, Christmas, you can't get it. If you want a pineapple at Halloween, 4th of July, or, or Martin Luther King Day, you can go get a, a, a pineapple. But if you know of a vegetable or a fruit that you can only get a certain time of year, like a pumpkin, I'll give you a thousand points. The points mean nothing and nobody wins the game ever. <laughs> But I'll give it to you because I cannot figure out another piece of uh, produce that is only available such a small amount of time like pumpkins are. That's true. This is in the United States for anybody listening outside of the, the United States. All right. So anyway, pumpkin bread is delicious. Um, and there's many variations. People will make like pumpkin chocolate chip bread or with white chocolate chips, whatever, pumpkin cream cheese bread. I used to make pumpkin cream cheese bread, um, and maybe I should do it again. It's just that both Joy and I are kind of lactose intolerant, so. I, I power through. Yeah, I don't yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but pumpkin bread is, is really good. You can't beat a good glass of milk. <laughs> pumpkin bread is really good, and there's many different recipes online, and it's it's kind of, it's nice and um seasonal it tastes very seasonal now you with all of these that we're going to speak of yes you can make it with a pumpkin pick it you know there's jack-o'-lanterns which are pumpkins that are designed to that's got thinner uh, meat inside of it that are really bred for carving and decorative purposes there are other pumpkins uh that are orange that are sugar pumpkins or uh, or thicker walled pumpkins that are designed for consumption. There's Jardel pumpkins. Uh, there's Cinderella pumpkins. There's many different pumpkins that are more sweeter or more meatier that are better suited for uh, edible applications. You can eat a jack lantern pumpkin. We've done it. It's just more stringy and uh, more plain. And with any of these that we speak about, you can actually go to the store and get the canned pumpkin. In a, in a can and do it with or you can pressure can your own pumpkin and utilize it later on in the sea in, in the year i feel like there needs to be like um smaller cans of pumpkin or something because sometimes you'll see a recipe and it'll be like four tablespoons of pumpkin and now you have a whole can of pumpkin and it's like what are you gonna do with that but anyway um the next one is a cake roll i'm sure you've seen these it's where you make a pumpkin sheet cake, or you can do this, any kind of cake, but it's more popular with the cake roll with the pumpkin, and then you put some icing in on the sheet cake, and then you roll it up, and it makes a delicious little pumpkin cake roll. And soup in a pumpkin. Yes, soup in a pumpkin. You carve out the, the guts of the pumpkin, and you take and put your broth in it you put your uh seasonings in it you put your material in it whether it's you know uh chicken or or what what else would you put in the the pumpkin there i, I guess chicken would be a terrible yeah you could do no you could do chicken, chicken. you could do all sort any sort of whatever vegetable type of, that makes sense whatever soup yeah that would that would work with the pumpkin flavor yeah and then you take and put the pumpkin in a pan with walls like you know a cake pan and put it in the oven and you bake the whole thing so whenever your time to serve the pumpkin, you got to be careful you're not jamming into the side and causing a, a hole in it to all the stuff inside of it comes out. 
you're scooping part of the pumpkin wall out in combination with the materials that you've added into it that is the soup base and you've got your pumpkin soup in a pumpkin pumpkin soup in a pumpkin yes um ravioli yeah so okay explain this one this is a thing pumpkin ravioli and even pumpkin pasta sauce you can purchase these things or you can make them and there's pumpkin pasta sauce obviously there's like a pumpkin squash soup which is different than the soup in the pumpkin um but yeah pumpkin ravioli is a thing you make your ravioli you put pumpkin um puree in it and then you obviously would want to season the puree Mm -hmm. but yeah that's pumpkin ravioli uh oatmeal and overnight oats now holly and i joke is why overnight oats why can't they be daytime oats right so (laughs) this is overnight oats have become very popular and i i get why they're convenient um you let them soak overnight the simplicity of it yeah the simplicity of it and I've seen uh, recipes all over about making pumpkin overnight oats, pumpkin spice overnight oats, et cetera, because pumpkin is really good for you. Um, it has a lot of vitamins. It has beta carotene. So it's good for you, especially if you're not, you know, not food shaming, but if you're not loading up with sugar, it's very beneficial. And it can be sweet and savory, just like pumpkin ravioli is obviously savory pumpkin soup. So pumpkin overnight oats, um, a lot of times you'll take oats and add um like some sort of milk base almond milk whatever dairy milk and then you would add the pumpkin and some sort of spices sometimes people add protein powder whatever makes sense for you again there's lots of recipes out there or you could just add pumpkin puree there that's what you can do is if you have half a can of pumpkin puree you can add to your oatmeal but obviously the pumpkin puree there's probably some additives versus if you just pressure canned your own pumpkin there's a lot of ingredients that are additives that you don't need in a that are unhealthy. No. no, it's just pumpkin and that's yeah. it. Um, pumpkin. Stop telling lies. Uh, I'm not telling lies. Pumpkin, by the way, vitamin A, B1, B6, and vitamin C, copper, fiber, magnesium. Uh, pumpkin provides calcium, potassium, and magnesium, which helps keep your heart regular and your blood pressure low. There you go. So there is lots of beneficial things in pumpkin. And I would recommend trying this with the it's oatmeal. It's a starchy vegetable, too. It is, yeah. yeah. I would recommend trying this with the oatmeal or overnight oats. I've done it with overnight oats. I had to change the recipe a little bit because it was like, I think I had added too much pumpkin. It was kind of bleh. But um, then I had to kind of tweak things. So I would maybe recommend trying to find a recipe. I just kind of was like guessing. So try the overnight oats or regular oats. Add it to your oatmeal. Um some people will just take and whisk, you know, pure pumpkin puree in with their coffee to add a little bit of a. Is there pumpkin, pumpkin ice cream? Is that a there seasonal thing? Uh, pumpkin juice. Now, I don't know if if you've ever had pumpkin, pumpkin juice. Pumpkin juice. You remember we used to juice pumpkin? Oh yeah. And it was the most horrible. <laughs> hor- oh, it was just terrible. We could not consume the pumpkin juice. Now, maybe it was the pumpkin because it wasn't. It was just. I just, just had this awful, foul, um, aerobic taste to it. Like it was, we'd juice it and drink it right away, and it was just terrible to drink. Now, if you are a pumpkin juice consumer and drinker, uh, we'd like to know what type of pumpkin you are drinking because we would like to exercise. And I'm wondering like, if you have to use like a pie pumpkin. We weren't using pie pumpkin. No, we were just using whatever pumpkin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, pumpkin flour and pumpkin seed flour. Now, these are, in segment one, we spoke about the dehydrator. This is where that dehydrator can come in uh, your kitchen use. You're going to take the pumpkin, and you're going to peel the pumpkin, and you're going to take whatever peeling's left, you're going to carve that off. You're going to take the pumpkin flesh or the meat and cut it very thin or cube it very small, and you're going to put it in the dehydrator and allow it to dry all the way. And then you're going to take and puree it into a food processor or a coffee uh, what do you call those things? Uh, coffee grinder things. Coffee grinder. Coffee grinder. Uh, or some type of bullet machine that will puree the 
dried pumpkin into a flour. Now, this is not a hundred for a hundred percent. If you're going to utilize pumpkin flour, you need to, based on the recipe, three cups, what is it, three cups of flour and one cup of pumpkin flour, or I forget what the ratio is, but it's not a hundred percent. And I should have looked that up before I started talking about it. Uh, but it does add that benefit, those vitamins and minerals that we spoke about into whatever you're l- l- trying to make. Um, so you can do that. And the same with the pumpkin seed flour. The pumpkin seed, you want to dry them and then puree them, and you can l- utilize them into a flour as well. Now, both you need to be aware of. There is a shelf life on pumpkin seed and pumpkin seed flour. Um, I mean, there's a shelf life on any flour. And that's something to keep in mind is that it can go um, stale. It can just become, especially pumpkin seed flour, there's oils in that and the oils can go rancid. So you want to keep in mind that you can't keep it forever, but it is a good alternative, not not necessarily the pumpkin seed flour that's a little gritty, but the pumpkin flour can be kind of a good gluten-free. That's another thing. It's gluten-free. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's... Something that it takes some time, takes some energy to make. And you probably, you know, if you keep it in the fridge, it's going to last longer than if you just leave it on a shelf stable and uh, you go that way. So it's something that you can experiment with, look at, and see what works best for you. Well, Holly, summer is over. The kids are back in school. And the nighttime temperatures are starting to get chilly in some areas. And your yard, which you need to take care of, you have forgotten about. Yeah, just because it's fall, we don't want to forget about our yards and those Japanese beetles either. They may be gone, but they're not far. Not only did they feast on your roses and berries this summer, they laid eggs on your turf so they can start again next year. Take a stand with Phylum's Grub Gone. Grub Gone is a non-chemical BT product that specifically targets scarab pests and their larvae. Simply apply the granule with a spreader and irrigate it into the soil and let the naturally occurring bacteria do its job. Not only is grub gone easy to use, the best part about it, it's non-toxic and effectively controlling grubs. Uh, the best part about it, it doesn't affect the bees, the pollinators, and the beneficial insects. So you don't have to worry about them picking up that toxicity and taking it back to their hives and toxifying their colonies. You can find all of this out at Grub Gone, uh, from Grub Gone, from phylumbioproducts.com the natural choice grubgone.com or phylum bioproducts.com that's p-h-y-l-l-o-m bioproducts.com 